Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Heal, Nourish, Grow podcast. Today, I am joined by Eileen Durfee, and I am really excited to share her story with you. She had some really crazy things happen as a result of environmental toxins, and that really put her on a path to health and wellness of how to start feeling better, how to eliminate these things from her environment. And then she ended up creating some amazing uh, products that came out of that that have been helping so many people. So Eileen, I will let you share a little bit more about your background so that people kind of know how you got into this and where you're coming from and all of the things that you were able to kind of overcome and figure out over time. Sure. Uh well, it actually started when I was born because the doctor ripped me <laughs> out with forceps, okay? And oh, then, me too. <laughs> <laughs> and then my structures all screwed up. When I started walking, my hips were twisted. My knee went into the other one. Every time I walked, my parents put me in special shoes. They sent me to doctors who x-rayed. Everything seemed fine. But I was in pain all the time. I mean, I grew nine inches in three months, <laughs> the summer of the eighth grade. And then to make matters worse, I got ran over by a car in a parking lot. And so my structure had issues. And then I got a silver amalgam filling when I was 20 years old and my health just went down crazy. It was like I became allergic to everything, uh, just had health problems. And then thyroid disease. And I, I was just a mess. And of course, uh, I had candida like crazy. And you know, their solution for problems with cystitis back then was let's let's put you on antibiotics constantly. Uh. Then I became allergic to about every antibiotic known to man and my lungs would close up, I'd have to have an EpiPen. And then so I started learning about the candida connection and leaky gut. And so I went on that diet where for three years, I never ate more than a hundred grams of carbs a day, nothing out of a box or a can, everything fresh I had to rotate because I became allergic to whatever I ate. So like for 72 hours, I didn't eat the same thing in the same family. And, you know, back then, you know, the doctors just put you on niastatin and, you know, which, was a Band-Aid, it's not systemic, not good for you. And so probably the first health thing I ran into was the Dr. Bernard Jensen high, you know, tissue cleansing through bowel management where they have you do those colonics and all the, mm. the diet and the enzymes and all that kind of stuff. And, and so I just, you know, couldn't wrap my brain around that I needed to take medication for the rest of my life. I, I just, I just wasn't there. I wouldn't give up. I just questioned what my doctors were telling me because I didn't think that they were up on the latest, you know? So I just mm. started researching, becoming my own Guinea pig. I mean, at one point, I mean, I had psoriasis all over my body. I mean, you can still see the scars from my acne that I had, but my hair was falling out. I couldn't remember why I walked into the other room. I mean, I just, you know, used a notepad that was before smartphones, had to write everything down to try to remember. <laughs> and it was just a miserable life. And so I just ate paleo before paleo even existed, you know, <laughs> tried all these things, you know, to control the symptoms. And then, you know, I thought every evil in my body was due to candida, but little did I know later on, I'm reading this article because I was just trying to learn everything I could about hair analysis and about how one mineral moves the other. It's kind of like a farmer, you know, why do you put nitrogen on the soil? It's not to get nitrogen in the plant. It's to raise tissue calcium levels. So in the wellness revolution, I had just switched from using drugs to medicate symptoms to using supplements to medicate symptoms. <laughs> but I really wasn't going for like the root cause. And so when I started that process, you know, here I was having panic attacks and insomnia and joint pain. And I mean, all the psoriasis and candida and all these issues, thyroid disease. You know, I started the hair analysis program, 
you know, and it's like a lot of the stuff that I was taking was causing my root problem to be worse. So I had to kind of like wean mm. myself off of those, even though they were natural things. And then I couldn't believe it. In like two months, I started sleeping. I wasn't anxious. My joint pain almost virtu virtually went away. I mean, I was into big time electronic gizmos and gadgets like Rife machines, pulse electromagnetic frequency machines, the multiple wave oscillator. You know, so here I felt like they were a ball and chain. They, I mean, they could control my pain and a lot of my symptoms. But I was really like a battery in a car that needed to be replaced and the person was refusing to get a new battery and just using jumper cables to jumpstart it all the time. <laughs> I mean, my body didn't have the minerals to conduct the electrical connections for the cells to work. And so once I started getting the right minerals in me, oh my gosh, I just started feeling so much better. But the problem with having the minerals, my body thought it won the lottery. It's like, yeah, I don't want lead and an arsenic and aluminum and cadmium anymore. So all those things were detoxing. So I had all these detox mm -hmm. reactions. So that's where all the detox equipment came in. I was using a sauna or I was using this or that. And it's like, well, I don't like that. So I go to sleep. And I would see, there's a lot of inventors in my family and I was a nuclear power plant quality engineer and top blueprint reading and inspection and all those kinds of things. So that's kind of how we solve our problems in our family is, you know, we have a widget, but we don't like all the features of it or we want it to be better. And then we go to sleep and then we create a new one, you know? And so then I started you know, developing products. Actually, I have seven utility patents and three design patents with more in the works. That's just in the U.S. I have international patents as well. But so I got into near infrared mm. sauna therapy. I mean, I'd been doing far infrared for years and sweating and thought it was great. And I really thought, you know, this doctor was like prejudiced or something. You know, it's like, after all, I spent like $3,000 on this sauna. I mean, it should be good. I mean, back then, you know, that was a lot of money. And, uh, you know, so my son was at the University of Washington. He's into biology and chemistry. And I'm like going, son, what about this near infrared light? You know, so he's like sending me all kinds of photobiomodulation stuff, you know, from the pre-med department and, it was just so fascinating to realize that that spectrum of light causes your cell to produce ATP, which is energy. Now, I mean, normally we got to eat food to digest it. And how many of us have digestion and gut problems and we're not like fully utilizing, you know, the food that we're eating to translate into energy? Because what the number one problem is fatigue. People are slamming down energy drinks and coffee just to have energy, that's a first sign there's an imbalance. And so, you know, that, that simple aspect of shining light on your body and the blood shunting that was so different in my other sauna, the heaters are all around you. Mm -hmm. This sauna, the one that I developed, has radiant panels so light can't leave. So mathematically calculate the speed of light for every second you stay in that sauna, how much more phototherapy your body gets. And this energetic well-being just came over me. So I've, I've never taken another kind of sauna sense. And just adding in everything from the things you breathe. Uh, you know, I have a little device. I was on an airplane, actually, and I had this lucid dream where... I saw this little gizmo on my tray table and I'm like going, wow. And it's like, I heard that I was breathing safe, you know? Yeah. And so I called it the breathe safe, but it ha I told the, the company that I was working with that it had to work off of one of those battery packs that you charge your cell phone or your tablet from. Mm -hmm. And so now since I've created it and lab tested it, this is actually increasing background oxygen 70 to 118%. For all wow. those people that do yoga and the deep breathing, you know, here's a little mm -hmm. hack where you're not doing yoga and you're sitting at your desk or you're even sleeping, you know, because it's like, you know, all these watches now for oxygen saturation, you know. 
<laughs> I'm, I'm getting customers calling me saying, hey, Eileen, I've got low oxygen, like 88%. And I lay this on the side and I sleep with it and it, my oxygen goes up to 92, 93. Well, 95 is normal, but if you can get oxygen over 90%, that's statistically significant. And so, you know, that's the one thing people don't realize. You know, I, I built houses and ran construction crews for years. And even the EPA says indoor air quality is three to five times more toxic than outdoors. You know, we've got mm -hmm. our furniture out gassing, our carpets, paints. You know, nowadays they have zero VOC paints and you can do hard surface. But a lot of people are not in that situation where they have a safe indoor environment. But you're breathing every second. That is your number one exposure. So, you know, uh, so that's the thing that I just started looking at is clean up my environment. When, when I was allergic to everything, like if somebody had perfume on or any chemicals like laundry soap or anything, I would just go into my lungs closing up. And so before you could go to the grocery store and buy non-toxic stuff, I was making all my own. But, you know, now people can just lighten the load, you know, take, begin taking the straws off the camel's back so your immune system can handle things more effectively. So we look at what we breathe, what we drink, what we slather on our skin, you know, and then even if we lived in a bubble, we couldn't get rid of it all. So we need to enhance our sweating in our elimination of toxins and, you know, like coffee enemas, you know, drinking ozonated water, you know, doing your skin brushing. Um, so I've just kind of incorporated it all because there's no one silver bullet and everybody's different. I was just in a symposium, uh, a bunch of doctors invited me because of the sauna because they're finding that people are losing their ability to detoxify. And it's all because of these genetic modifications or polymorphisms. And it's like every polymorphism can change the body's way it reacts in four different things. It can excite, you know, it can downgrade, it can actually cause toxins and then you know, use alternate pathways. And so they're looking at finding ways, especially post COVID syndrome to mm -hmm. be able to get the body to detoxify and not be so inflammatory. And so it's just so exciting to see that we can use light. We can use energy, you know, our spine. That's the other thing, you know, I talk about growing nine inches in three months and being ran over by a car. So part of my passion is, is restoring the shape and curvature of the spine. Because if anybody has a tight muscle, you know, there's all this stretching people are doing, but people need to realize you can't change the muscle attachment point on the bone. So what does that mean? The bone is in the wrong place in gravity. So if you can get, induce the shape, then your muscles will relax. And so you're expending less energy. And so I'm big into not having the nerves being pinched because out of your brain, down your spinal cord, every nerve exits through these meningy sheaths and controls different organs in your body. So even if you have the nutrition, if you've got an impingement, you know, you're not going to get the best results that you could have. You know, you're going to have decreased circulation in that area. So I kind of have had to look at the whole body approach. And, and that's kind of been my experience where I just – you know, keep on looking at more ways of changing our environment, you know, being able to take the straws off the camel's back and give the body what it needs to heal. Yeah. And you're, I mean, I can see how having the issues that you had in the past, how you ended up going down this road, because you had such a conglomeration of different things happening to you all at the same time. And 
I mean, it is kind of like where to begin. And so, I mean, I, I feel like you're a little bit similar to me because sometimes whenever I have something like that, I'm just going to throw the kitchen sink, <laughs> which is not always the best, which is not always the best because then you don't really know which thing was effective, but you definitely hit on a few things there uh, that I'm really passionate about. Of course, all the stuff with the microbiome is becoming more and more um, studied now, more and more information coming out about that. Um, you said your son was sending you articles about photo biomodulation. Um, and I'm really have been into the whole, I don't have one yet, so I need to look at your device. <laughs> but um, The uh, near infrared sauna just has like a, a host of health benefits that we didn't even realize before. And to your point said it goes right down to the mitochondria level, um, giving you the ability to produce more energy through ATP. So I'm wondering if you could just expand on the sauna idea a little bit, because there are other near sure, infrared yes. saunas out there to be fair. And so I'd love to hear more about when you were researching all this and discovering all this, what was it that you were finding that you weren't happy with, with the existing products and information? Well, at the time it was 2011. Um, I had been using a far infrared sauna since about year 2003. And so I was doing daily you know, saunas and sweating. And then I became familiar with EMFs. And lo and behold, I was like, that was, even though I was spending a lot of time in there, I was frying myself with, you know, high amounts of EMF. And with that, I was introduced in 2011 to the concept of near-infrared saunas using incandescent heat bulbs like you'd see at the food buffet. And uh, when I tested the spectrum of light coming off of heat lamp bulbs, there are 550 to 3,400 nanometers of light. So it climbs sharply like a two to one slope in a mountain, just up to about 1,100 and down. And near infrared is 700 to 1,400 nanometers of light. And then you've got mid, far infrared starts at 3,000. And so with the heat lamp bulbs, the saunas that were there available at the time, and, and still the other competitors use canvas, which, as you know, doesn't have an insulation value. So the problem with the near-infrared saunas, even the light panels that I started using with the enclosure, was that you had to preheat it. And even when you got in there, you weren't getting the real sweat that you mm -hmm. were like coming from a tr traditional dry sauna. You weren't getting that much sweat on, even though you felt energetically so much better and amazing that, that you knew that the benefit was there, you know, from the ATP energy. Uh, so I just started thinking about all this photobiomodulation and how can we contain it so that it's not wasted. So the radiant layers in my sauna tent panels keep the light from escaping. There's a picture on both Instagram and the website that shows the drop ceiling, you know, cause the other saunas, I'm six foot, my son's six foot five and the other near infrared saunas, they're five foot tall. And they're like a little trapezoid. So so you like, it's almost claustrophobic and it's canvas. So when it gets humid and sweaty, it kind of begins to stink. And, and then, you know, because it's porous, it's hard to clean. So I wanted to give a larger area. So insulation had to come into to play. You know, we had to keep the heat in. And then keeping the light in to maximize the phototherapy. And then the cotton used in other saunas out there at the time were not organic. And when mm. you realize that GMO cotton actually embeds pesticide producing capabilities of the fibers of the plant. So pesticides are actually a sub volatile organic compound. Volatile organic compounds, VOCs, cause cancer. So when you combine heat with subvolatile organic compounds, they 
change form into more harmful volatile organic compounds. So I couldn't wrap my brain around taking a sauna with GMO cotton fibers when I'm trying to detoxify. I, I just couldn't believe that that would be a thing to recommend or do. Mm-hmm. So I came up with um, a radiant insulated tent and started using organic webbing with it. And another factor that people don't realize, in Europe, they have a thing called ROHS testing, where they analyze a product for a whole host of contaminants, including lead or whatever. Now, in America, we don't have that testing. And we'll allow products like the zippers in our pants to contain 50% more lead than they do in Europe. And so I built the lamp fixture to have a non-detectable rating of every contaminant tested in Europe because I wanted it to be ultra safe. I didn't want it to be outgassing. Um, Before I had the tent, I just had the lamp and I had people putting the lamp fixture in other sauna boxes or making their own tent. And you know, people really after me for the tent. And so then I created uh, a tent that was based off of only having an R4 insulation panel. And it was like four foot by four foot, but still only five foot tall. And my customers were like going, oh, I want to lay down. And I had this one lady who flipped the sauna over, put the floor <laughs> against the wall and laid diagonal. So I go, oh my gosh, I went to sleep. <laughs> I had a dream of this convertible tent. It was like a transformer. And so I made it because my son's six foot five. So someone six foot five or shorter could lay down, stand up or sit down all in the same tent. And we upgraded the insulation to an R12. And the whole tent is ROHS certified, so we're not having lead in the zippers or, you know, all zero VOC paint on the steel poles. And even the bamboo mats, I had it boiled and baked under pressure. So you don't have to worry about fumigation chemicals. And so what started happening is you didn't even need to preheat the sauna. When you plug it in, in five minutes, it's 120 degrees. But because of the mathematical speed of light for every second that you're in there, you sweat twice as much in half the time with no preheat. So is this the benefit of using a tent versus a wooden structure? Is that it heats more quickly or what made you decide tent? And it's also, I imagine, more portable. But tell me some of the benefits to that. Well... My local business, because I have brick and mortar, um, I actually had a membership facility where people would come in and use the Rife machine or the multiple wave oscillator or all this different equipment. And if anyone had cancer locally, what I used to do is I used to build these wooden light panels and then go loan them to them. And so when it came time to build a sauna, I knew that there was just a lot of boxes out there, you know, and what there was a real lack of was something portable that you could give the Mm -hmm. gift of life to someone, um, not having to have special electrical in the home. And so when I came up with the newest version that I have my utility patent on, where six foot five sit, lay down. I have one that's big enough for a yoga practice, a full yoga practice. And they're putting double lights in there. They're, I mean, it's, it's just amazing. Um, with, and the, the tents also have the drop panel because, you know, because a cubic meter size when I, you know, it's no longer four foot by four foot, it's three foot by four foot by six foot five. So the cubic volume is just slightly bigger. And I didn't know from an R4 to an R12 how much hotter it would get in there. So I created this drop ceiling to be at the five foot so you could sit in a stool. You can get it 190 degrees with a drop tent. Now I have people checking their rectal temperatures and their rectal temperatures with the breeze safe inside. And I'll explain how that works. They're getting rectal temperatures in the hypothermic range. Now, 
you know, there's hypothermic treatments that you can go have for 25 grand, but now here's a sauna for the first time where you can get your rectal temperature to the hypothermic temperatures. So that speed of light, it's not just the ambient air temperature, it's the internal body heat that's being created. And then uh, part of the breeze safe, this little gizmo, uh, I read a sauna study that uh, as long as you inhaled 20,000 negative ions per cubic centimeter and took a sauna, your rectal temperature wouldn't go down. That's the first thing. When your body gets hot, it, it, it lowers the rectal temperature before it goes back up, you know. So when you're inhaling negative ions, your body's not as stressed in that way. And they found out the skin surface temperatures were hotter. The sweat volume coming off a person was double. So if, if you're like a lot hotter and sweater, you're, you know, they were asking the people, how do you feel? The people that were hotter and sweatier are actually more comfortable than the people without breathing the negative ions. They observed electrolyte changes in the person and a strange phenomenon. When they got out of the sauna, their rectal temperature continued to rise. So the thing that that got me about the breeze safe is I was into the clean air originally. And then I read the sauna study and it's like, okay, so let's start putting the breeze safe in the sauna. Cause that's what the, the traditional sauna pouring the water over the rocks. That mm -hmm. study was evaluating the type of heaters because some heaters were pr producing positive instead of negative ions. So they were evaluating the quality of a sauna and a Europe also considers 50% of the benefits coming from the negative ions that you're breathing. So, of course, I had this lab tested. I put it at my feet. I'm sitting on a stool and I'm going, okay, that's for me, it's 44 inches. <laughs> <laughs> what am I really inhaling at 44 inches? So I wanted to know. And it's 56,000 negative ions per cubic centimeter, even though this makes 19,100,000 negative ions and 4,550,000 positive ions. Now this is considered plasma, it's not a negative ion generator. And there, that's a new technology. I mean, the Los Angeles airport uses giant plasma air purifiers and it gets rid of the jet fumes mm -hmm. and it gets rid of bacteria and all kinds of things. So it cleans up the air, but most plasma generators produce equal amounts of negative and equal amounts of positive ions. And with the breeze safe, with this boosted circuit that I created, it has a different ratio and we can produce higher amounts of negative ions without producing ozone gas. The reason why everyone else doesn't make higher amounts is because in the process, ozone gas gets generated. Mm. So, this is safe, uh, you know, and, and I read another sauna study. Oh, my gosh. They measured sweat off of people in a sauna to see what pollutants were in it versus someone exercising. Because when you're mm. exercising, you're, you know, utilizing the sympathetic dominant nervous system. And when you're in that mode, you know, digestion you know, decreases, you know, detoxification decreases. So with exercise, because people go, well, I sweat. Why do I need a sauna? Well, with <laughs> exercise, you're losing minerals predominantly. With sauna sweat, it's mainly toxic crud that we want to get rid of. But then the humidity rises as you sweat in a hot box. So then you're rebreathing it. So this mm -hmm. little gizmo lab testing shows that it's super powerful at getting rid of toxic humidified sauna sweat. Those things that we don't want to rebreathe and get back in our body. After all, we're working hard to, you know, detoxify. So the breeze safe, the part of the oxygen is accidental. I actually had people buying these things, putting them on the battery packs that had multiple chemical sensitivities, asthmatics, people on sleep apnea equipment. And people should go on the website and read the reviews because basically there's something about clean air that's ionized that it 
allows people to breathe better and to not go into an asthmatic attack. They're like standing there with their inhaler breathing over this and their attack stops without having to use the inhaler. Okay, you're and blowing my mind right now. So <laughs> I sent this off to the lab to figure out. I surmised that it was making oxygen, but I didn't know. So mm. sure enough, you know, because our background oxygen levels, depending on if we're indoors with the HVAC system, we might only have 15% oxygen in our air. But if we're outdoors in the mountains, we might have as high as 20. So... What comes off of here is 17%. So that's really adding to our background oxygen levels, 70 to 118%, depending on where you're at. And so I surmise that's why people can breathe so well. There's even reviews on the website where people quit, you know, there's people taping their mouth at night. Mm -hmm. This actually, there's many reviews about their nasal pouches just clearing up and no longer being a mouth breather and sleeping the best they have in years. Uh, I need to put you in touch with Dr. Shirazi. I just had this guest. Um, he was on and his focus is on kind of myofacial pain and TMJ and all this stuff. And he was talking about how a big component of some of that is breathing. And one of his things is mouth taping. And that is very big in the biohacking community. And, and it's kind of like a quick and easy hack. But my gosh, for people that really have, um, he was talking about, you know, if your turbinates are really enlarged or if you have a deviated septum, those things, mouth taping is not really going to help you that much. But if you had a device like this, for example, that might really be a game changer for some people. Yeah, the reviews are phenomenal. There's a lady who multiple chemical sensitivities wasn't even able to go outside. So they put them on battery packs. You can buy the battery pack on Amazon or wherever else. I don't sell the battery packs, but it, mm -hmm. it plugs in. I do give you the w, double stick Velcro tape so you can attach it to it, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and you just cross body purse and you just put it right there. And it's like, they're just able to live now. I mean, That's it plugs amazing. into a cigarette lighter in your car, a USB port, the wall, and so it's silent air purification. I mean, you, you know, need to clean this plate and the needles keep it free of dust, but that's how easy it is. We give you a stiff brush and, you know, uh, but yeah, this is, this is phenomenal, uh, a real big solution. And, and well, so together, we my sauna system, it's capturing all the light. And oh, one more thing about the sauna. The heaters are always all the way around, except in an incandescent bulb, you know, with the radiant panels, R12, keeping the heat in. Yes, there's heat everywhere, but it's hottest towards the light. So what does your body do? It'll shunt blood on one side of the body to towards the lights, which mm -hmm. vasculates your tissues so that you can have water escape from your bloodstream to cool you down. But we don't want to cool ourselves down, so I teach people to wipe your body down, turn 180 degrees, and then your body will shunt the blood the other way. So it's double the circulation. And the weirdest phenomenon is in this sauna, you begin sweating on one side of your body first. <laughs> After you rotate once, then you're just drenching everywhere. Everybody, it's like uh, Dr. Rimka, for instance, she bought one of the clear light with the non-toxic glues and the low EMF and the full spectrum light you know, over $6,000. And she actually likes my sauna better. It just, it feels better. So it's the capturing the radiant light, not preheating it. And the different spectrum, a lot like clear light and some of the other brands, they've put like LED lights in there to give you some of the spectrum, but it's not the majority of the spectrum of lights. And, and those LEDs do not penetrate the body like the heat lamp bulbs do. And so it's more of a, you know, it's undisputed that heat stress therapy, no matter what kind you're going to live. If you take five saunas a week, you are going to live longer and have less diseases and die from 40% less of everything. It's just like even accidents. I don't know what it does, <laughs> but it is like one of the most beneficial things you can do for yourself. So I'm not knocking any sauna out there, just stay away from the high EMFs. But people have all, you know, pretty much come to terms with that now. And they've been mm -hmm. changing their designs or using 
less non-toxic materials because some woods even have volatile organic compounds in them. The pitch contains terpene. So mm -hmm. when that's heated, you know, and that's why a lot of people might feel like they have allergies to some kinds of woods, mm -hmm. but it's really, you know, probably the exposure to the volatile organic compound. But so, you know, there's also reviews on my sites for the saunas where people have had like four different saunas, supposedly non-toxic, low EMF mm -hmm. and all of that. And they put their testimony on there that it's like, hey, this is the only sauna that I'm using that I'm not reacting to. And so I've gone to great lengths because at one time I was allergic to everything, like I mentioned. And so I create the products with those factors in mind. And so, you know, I still have people that like the wooden sauna and then I get them to try my sauna. And it's like when you, feel so much better and lifelong issues are resolved by taking it. You get over the fact that it's a tent and not a fine crafted, you know, wooden box. And besides, you know, anybody who's in yoga, you know, you got to pay a membership, but they're not mm -hmm. using near infrared heat. A lot of that no. is really <laughs> high EMF. You're next now with COVID, you're six inches from someone else. So you're being exposed to all this stuff. We're in the convenience of your own home, own home. You can do a full yoga practice with the near infrared because near infrared also increases nitric oxide and it increases flexibility, reduces pain. There's all these cellular effects we're keeping Just mind. Take my money now. Take my money now. <laughs> I mean, I could talk to you about this particular topic for a long time because I think I mentioned to you before we started recording that I'm actually a longtime yoga practitioner, taught hot, hot yoga for many years. Um, so I want to add some more details to this in the show notes. But before we run out of time, I want to touch on the couple exciting things that you have. And I wouldn't normally do this, but I have another recording. But um, uh, you have a couple of exciting things coming up and I don't want people to miss this because I think that the people that you're working with just speaks to how well the things that you've been developing are actually working. So could you chat a little bit about that upcoming, um, I think it's a conference that you have coming up where you're working with some MM, MMA fighters or something like that? Yes. Well, fight week in Las Vegas, uh, July 2nd, Luke Rockhold is fighting and it's everybody goes like the week before. And so Luke Rockhold had a herniated disc in his low back and was unable to fight. Now, he, Joe Rogan and him are friends, and Rogan recommended a spinal surgeon to treat his disc. At about that time is I got in contact with Luke Rockhold, and I gave him some of my prototype spinal fitness equipment, and I taught him how to do certain exercises. So he hasn't gotten the surgery, but he's recovered and he's strong enough and he's fighting in July. That's and amazing. so I've met with a uh, Cheeto. He's a fighter who will probably get a championship belt. He's very good. I met with him at the Ruka gym and Basically, there's four exercises, and in five minutes, I take a professional athlete or anybody, even an eight-year-old woman who can barely walk, but I just do this evaluation. I have them jump up, see where they land, have them raise their arms, see where, you know, where their ankle is. I have them turn their head. I have them feel their hamstrings and bend over and see it. all the listeners out there, how many of you are your hamstrings tight? You know, if they're tight, <laughs> that tells me that your posture is not in the ideal position in gravity. See, when you're at rest, there's supposed to be zero hamstring effort. If you have forward head posture two inches, and if your hips are two inches, the hamstring effort is 843 pounds. Wow. And the way the fast twitch muscle recruitment works is if that person with tight hamstring runs, the body will reserve that muscle expenditure to keep that tight because it's protective. It's like, we don't want you to drift further out in gravity. And so they don't have the full use of their hamstrings. So their stride link won't be as wrong. Their jump height won't be as good. Their speed won't be as fast. And so I take anyone 
do this and then we do the pelvic tilt over the power cushion, a sit up and a neck flexion. Five minutes later, I kid you not, I've had one guy bend over and get 11 inches of reach in five minutes. Every single person, like uh, Cheeto, he couldn't touch his fingertips to the floor. There's a video of me doing the exercises with him, how he's almost palm flat in five minutes. And wow. so this stuff works. It's like Dr. Sugar, he passed on, but that's the chiropractor after I got ran over by the car that rehabilitated me. The other doctor said I'd never be able to lift my arms, you know, above my head. And so with his theories, I've used them my whole life. And so he originally started this equipment with the U.S. Olympic team and the New England Patriots. When Ron O'Neill was the coach there for 26 years, they were using it on the players. Then when Marcus Paul went to the New York Giants, they took the power cushion with them. Then he <laughs> went to the Dallas Cowboys. They bought and then and Weiska, the strength and conditioning coach, they all used that. But it was like a secret. It's like we can't give away – this secret to other players because then we lose our competitive edge. But low back pain alone is a hundred billion dollar a year industry in America. That's not neck pain. That's not mid back pain. And so I'm making this available to the world. So <laughs> Eileen, thank you again so much for sharing your wealth of knowledge and your personal health experiences that all led to this amazing products and company that you've created. Um, thank you so much for taking the time. Oh, thank you for having me.